The outpost is going up. The mining camp as well. <laughs> Where can they? Wham says all your base are belong to me now. Wham might be out of Golden League. But now we are going to get a preview of that last series that will decide where he ranks on the money. If he makes uh, $1,250 more, because we've got a preview of the upcoming Golden League match between Wham and the Muslim as they're clashing on the rank leaderboards. And they are clashing with a little bit of HRE English love going on here. Ooh. This is an interesting matchup on Lipany, actually. Uh, we've seen it a few times recently, ever since the change in the builds towards the double TC as an example. I think the last time we saw this was actually Kazva versus Beastie, uh, where Beastie played a very oppressive outpost spam containment strategy, and Kazva just tried to eco-boom with double TC. Let's see if something similar plays out here, because I think the English are still, in a lot of ways, an open book. And it's very much a what's-your-flavor type sieve. Tell me what's your flavor. Sorry, that song is too good. Always remember that from uh, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. But no, the, the English aren't really figured out yet. There's not just a go-to. It's not like when you had Roost Horse Arch as an example, right? You, you've seen multiple builds. You've seen the old Lombo Rush is still attempted. We've seen the cheeky Man at Arms play in the early game. Uh, we've seen Lombo Man at Arms with a delayed timing compared to the typical Lombo Rush that's pretty potent. We've seen multi-TCs into Castle Age. We've seen Castle Age rush into Knights. Uh, one of them being where you delay your feudal to a point where when you do complete the feudal tech up, you're instantly ready to build the castle age tech up as well. So there's a lot of different kind of uh, uh, fractional builds that haven't really been able to, as one, dictate that they are the one so far. So kind of curious to see what Wham... Oh, Wham! It's the, it's the Archer play! I didn't even mention it. Remember, the English peasants are able to fire bows. And that's exactly why Wham is here. This is, this is a Pantaton strategy, folks. I've been hearing about this. Wham is the one who apparently does it all the time, and he's doing it here to poor old Voldemort, to poor old Benny boy, before maybe he can even get enough gold. And the villagers are going to force him away. At least one upside here. When you do play as the HREs, you do have a prelate that will be able to heal damage done to you, but now you can't access your gold, and you are going to have to go to the west side here. The outpost is going up. The mining camp as well. <laughs> Wham says all your base are belong to me now. In fact, I would love to see a Rax play in conjunction with this because now you have gold to be able to afford man arms. That could be pretty dope. Yo, this is this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> and look at this straight away. Wham moves around to check if he's gone in the other gold. The answer for now is no. And I think this might be a situation where Demusum has to like extend outposts out towards the mining camp just to protect him, because going Spears isn't going to work here against an outpost and English villagers. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I think Wham is the only player I've been hearing about doing this. I'm actually glad we finally got to see it, because I wasn't sure if we were ever going to get to see it. I've heard it talked about, but I'm, I've never been able to catch Wham playing the English. <laughs> now we're getting treated to it. So what do you do if you're bent to counter this? Well... Like we said, you, you could go for like the spear play. You need to go for the outpost, though. And I think he needs to get the last of the wood to build the outpost up with the mining camp. Otherwise, he's going to get blocked out here. And here it is. He's pulling now. Wham's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. What y'all think you're doing in my area? Double scout as well. The damage could add up here. <laughs> he's going to block him again. He needs to actually get the outpost. He still hasn't done the outpost. The walls. He's going to try and wall it. But it's too late. In fact, he might lose one villager. Kobe. Nice save there. Just enough heals coming out. However, the villagers, they might be able to get in range. No wheelbarrow attack just yet. However, he will make it in range. So one villager goes down. Another mining camp built. Another one wasted. Oh, and the wall's back the other way. So he's going to try and stop him here. But look at the move. Wham. He realizes like if he trades out four more villagers, it doesn't matter what happens to these ones anymore. They've done their job. And now back round the other way. Yo. The Muslim, he's playing wham like a fiddle. He's going to block him. He did quick wall up as well, so he hasn't got a way through here. He's going to have to torch his way through. But don't worry, folks. The villagers, they do it fast. Five villagers on the front line instantly gets rid of the wall. He'll move through a renewal of the wall construction on the south side, as it looks like Wham doesn't want to actually split up his villagers the same way the Muslim is. Instead, he just wants to snipe more villages down. Another one gets killed off. And remember, because he hasn't teched up, this is the downside to this. This outpost doesn't do anything. Literally nothing. Because he cuts it. He doesn't have Aristots. His villagers aren't here either. He can at least chop his way through the wood line, though. And that's exactly what he wants to do. 
Villages, remember, you're now in range of the outpost, so you do have the attack speed buffer. And look at the pull to Muslim. He instantly sends nine villages over, but villages are coming again from Wham. Uh-oh. In fact, you could just garrison. Just garrison for more damage. Just Wham. Wham, just garrison. Dude. Bro. Just get inside. There we go. He's going to go for it now. Like, it's a much better way of utilizing him here. It looks like he might even get a scout for his trouble. And no, the Muslim still doesn't have enough gold. And he's going again. This is actually so fun to watch. <laughs> Wham. Okay, I was about to say, he needs wheelbarrow. It's coming. It's almost there. The Muslim in the meantime, he's just going to go straight for the gold. Just needs to get a drop off straight away. If he gets a tech up, he can maybe do something here. He's got plenty of food to put to good use. The villagers are in again. And they're going to pepper down probably two more villagers here. He accidentally stops off to repair as well. Another villager targeted out. Might actually get one more for his trouble. Which stage? The play kind of feels worthwhile, I feel. Wham. Oh, he gets it. The pro that was healing the scout. No. The auto healing. It cost him an extra. And that's four villagers dead. Also, all the idle time, right? So overall, Wham has got reasonable value out of this. But now, now the Muslim's had enough. Now he's making his way up. It's going to be the mine work pass. And this is where Wham needs to get his own tech up. He's delayed himself excessively at this rate. At this point in the game. He will still be able to deny the gold. So even with this tech up, not out of the woods yet. Does mean you don't have the gold to push out mana arms. You can, however, build into horsemen, which will just dispatch these villagers quickly. In fact, the play right now for Wham might be to build an outpost next to this wood line. So it's kind of maybe some sort of stabilization point. Tech up is about to be underway for Wham soon. Does need to get the remnants of the gold. Only two people working on that gold vein right now. It's going to slow him down. Villagers. Oh, wow. He sacrifices the mistakes made there. Wham, no. No, 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 no. All right, screw that eco lead you had. That's just gone. That That is actually just gone. I mean, he's still free eco ahead, but you're up against Holy Inspiration. And you're going to be bursted out of this area now. On top of that, look at the numbers. Like, you still haven't even begun your feudal up. And this now offers up options to Wham, uh, to, to the Muslim, rather. To Muslim, he can think about going multi-TC. He can get midfield aggressive. Either way, I, I do feel like Wham is now a disadvantage. I wonder if he feels like he got enough value out of that. I think the villagers didn't need to be thrown away that way. I think they still could have had value in denying the gold. You know, it would have been diminished value, but it, it still would have been idle timing or also the Muslim just gathering a resource he didn't want. But now, as a result of this, he's able to move out. One scout on the outpost isn't going to deter him. And this is where you start to think, like, imagine if you just had five villagers here still. Probably the Muslim wouldn't be making this pull, but... As a result, you'd still be denying his gold. This tech up, I mean, it does feel slow, but by English standards, this is kind of rushed. Four villagers to try and build it up. Because he realizes how late he is. I mean, folks, we are about to hit eight minutes in the game, and you're only halfway with your tech up as English. In fact, at seven minutes 50 in this game, an HRE player managed to tech up. What are these timings? Yeah. Well, the upside now for the Muslim is because he did actually get his tech up, he now has all this surplus resource to put to good use, which he will instantly use to get into stables and get into horsemen. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's even considering pro scouts alongside it. Could be a worthwhile play, actually, here. Yeah. To see if he opts for it. I'm expecting four or five horsemen to, to push the midfield. Might stop at three, possibly. Depends how much he wants to achieve at this point in the game, because it might be that the Muslim now just sees this as an opportunity to boom up twice. In fact, he could just wait and not build one of two horsemen, right? Get two horsemen out, see if there's any offense coming. And if there's not, you literally just hoard and go straight up to Castle, because now you have quite a balanced eco to rush Castle Age. And Wham could see that as well by the amount of villagers here. So he should know what's coming next. And the question mark is whether he can match the timing. Looking at it, Wham, yes, he can. And that means he's going to get two TCs. Actually, he might get two TCs ahead of the Muslim going up to Castle. Especially the horsemen wasting their time just to get rid of the scout. Well, I'm kind of content. Feels like he's got a decent amount of info as to what is coming that will feed back into his next choice, which is going to be the Castle up. 
which stage you can get into the English Knights. And remember, the English Knights actually can just completely rinse the HREs if you're fighting near the aura due to the attack speed buffer. So always something you have to remember when dealing with the pesky English, especially when you're what I kind of call a vanilla sieve, like the HRE. They have these unique little quirks around like marching drills and of course the Lang deck. But for the most, like they don't necessarily trade out well. Even from a man at arms perspective, you have more damage, but you're up against some more chunky man at arms in the English that will also have that attack speed buffer. So I think it's very important that wherever Demuslim does choose to fight, it's away from these auras. Interesting King's Palace as well. I think the intent with this King's Palace placement from Wham is to just extend his farmland area over in this direction. As realistically, like you'd probably prefer having a King's Palace next to like the Ford Wood line or near the stone. Maybe securing more, basically. Oh, wow. And the timing on this Oh, the Muslim is going to dive in. It's like one or two villagers could end up dying here, but won't be denied his castle up. Nice micro, actually. We'll save the day. Actually gets the horseman and keeps the villagers alive. Barely on any HP as well. Big play there coming out from Wham. Can't really afford to lose more villagers after what happened in your opponent's base. After all that, notice that Demuslim is the one notably trailing behind. 28 to the 34 eco, and that is about to get vastly worse now that the King's Palace is in play. And that's why he goes to different eco benefits. No Burgrave Palace this game. Instead, Demuslim will just go for the tried and true good old Regnitz Cathedral. Remember, this is uh, allowing you to turn one relic into being as effective as free, and you can bank two relics inside. So as you can see, you're going to end up getting 600 gold per minute from having two relics garrisoned in this. And it looks like he'll actually go for the monastery. I quite like this. The interesting part is Wham's not trying to match it at all. So you like, usually have the choice, right? You either go multi-TC or you go for like monasteries. I think it comes down to like what your intent is when the game is meant to end. With Demuslim making this play, you can see it as kind of him playing towards his advice for already having prelates. But I think this is also him kind of saying, I feel like this is going to go towards pop cap. At which stage, if I can get my villager number sorted with multi TCs or a quick pass to Swabia, then this finite resource, there's an infinite resource of relics is going to matter more, right? If I can get the majority of them and we get to hyper late game, I'm going to be able to compete with you despite the fact you're English and get access to the enclosures, which gives the English a way of generating gold in the late game. Wolf's going up a little bit late. Looks like the Muslim is going to sneak in. That's going to force some idle time out of Wham. A little bit greedy with the enclosing. It's going for a wide enclosing, though. I do like this. It's going to give him a lot of room. The Muslim isn't as simple. Like, he doesn't have the same kind of spread accessible to him via these choke points. If you look at his base, you can see that it's very small if he relies on these choke points initially. And if he tries to pursue further out ones, it becomes a complete cluster truck in the blink of an eye. Muslim. Oh, careful not to throw away those knights. Luckily for him, these little boy longbows don't really do enough damage to actually help taking them down. It looks like Sacred Sight Control is the target now for the Muslim. Quite like this. Playing out towards the relics, but on the way getting the Sacred Sights, because he realizes that right now, Wham doesn't really have the means to come out, right? Like, you see his composition of longbows and spears. And although that will counter the Muslim right now in a direct fight, it doesn't have the fluidity that knights allow, right? You can't just easily respond to these sacred sites being taken. And also, if the Muslim keeps shuffling around the side of your base, you also can't move out for the sacred sites at all because you'd probably be sacrificing eco back at base. Looks like he will at least shift out with a small contingent here. Only two knights in the field right now. So unlikely to be contested, but you can see that's going to begin to escalate fast from the Muslim. Three racks being built up. Will be a play probably into the man arms. Could go for the Lang's neck as well. Lang's neck can be a little bit problematic due to the distance they have to go to gap close upon Lombowman. The distance that they're in range. So instead, man arms just a much more solid play, especially considering your opponent is building units that do not handle armor very well. Miss Raiden. There's too many villagers here, so Wham's going to lose a few. We'll try to go for the garrison. Ride through. Uh, buddy, no. You're here to kill villagers, not towers. And that's what you're going to be able to accomplish. Takes down one. Might be able to take down a second one on the exit here, but can't hang around long enough. We'll have to make his way out. 
And now Wham. Uh, oh, he still hasn't enclosed himself here. There's still a few uh, roots into his base. And instead, he starts to shuffle his way towards the Muslim's bed. This is... Wow, Wham's put himself on a timer with this move. So right now, his composite is strong. But he has a very, very small window of time to utilize it like this. And I think it's going to be too late because of the aforementioned mana arms that are being built in the back of the Muslim's base. Like, he'll be ready to instant respond to this. We'll lose one villager in the meantime. First round of mana arms is going to start coming out. In fact, one or two already in the field. More relics are being picked up now. So it looks like it's going to be four going the way of him. Might even be five. As it looks like he was trying to run the Norman Relic off. E repairs is going to be a pain in the ass. And with only Spearman here, these mana arms are going to win. So this effort by Wham uh, isn't going to yield anything. I start to wonder if it would have been better to actually enclose yourself. Because in the meantime, the Knights continue to raid in. A little bit more chip damage done. I mean, Wham, this... Maybe, like, I'm starting to think, like, like, what is the logic for Wham not building a wall? Maybe it's because Wham sounds like Ram, so he's so used to hearing the word Wham that he thinks that everyone's just going to instantly resort to Rams. But even if his opponent wants to do that, it would take a little bit of time to get through that palisade. And also, if your opponent starts building Rams, then, like, the knight issue is kind of dealt with, right? Like, because <laughs> he's not going to necessarily be pushing raidy parties if he's coming in with, with Rams. He's coming in to end the game at that stage. So yeah, kind of a, an awkward situation to consider that he's still not actually walled this in. I do hear that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer, though. This could be a slow and painful death for Wham. Especially the mana arms numbers starting to escalate. No mana arms of his own because he knows that if he builds into them, they're going to be counted out. Remember that you've got you know these, these, these fat sausage rolls here with the armor clad that makes them the chunky boys. But that chunkiness doesn't quite match up to the bonus damage of these man arms, right? You get an extra two melee resistance, but these lads get an extra six damage, as well as the extra two from the two-handed. So, it's not really an ideal unit to be building into, but Wham says, shut the hell up. What do you know? We disowned you for a reason. You couldn't even keep control of us, Brit. That is true, Canadia. We could not keep control of you. Then he'll go into his swore boys, but I, I I mean I'm hitting the doubt key. I'm playing a run of, of LA Noir right now, hitting doubt over and over again. Not the player. That would be abusive. Just the thought process, because Man at Arms isn't gonna cut it alone. The crossbows, I do respect that though. That's what he needs. He's a fast though. This little raid in could end up being a bit too quick. Wham will just start a step back with the Lombos and looks like at the moment the Muslim's going to disengage because well I don't know what could an HRE player be doing when he lacks commitment in this assault what could he be doing Wham could it be he wouldn't would he he would he most definitely would he's making his way up and Wham is in no position to do the same Instead, he needs to make a move. And this is where a second win, a second opportunity comes in. If he can renew the outpost. But they got burnt to crisp. Which means it's going to take time. The attack speed buff is not going to be there. He's trying to actually extend them into the stealth forest to make sure they don't get sniped like they did last time. As he marches in with his force down the center. A time in this might be able to catch him slightly off guard. But you've got limited time to make this work. Prelate it's like, no. They coerced me. God told me to do it. Don't kill me. I'll let him walk away. Instead, five villages looks like a much more tasty treat for the English vanguard. And they will surround to make sure they can't move away. Now the Muslim will need to make a farm transition as he was playing pocket ecos. Does still have one more operational in the northeastern side here, which is never going to be noticed because Wham, remember, he's not building cavalry, so he's not going to be looping around the sides at all. So this is pretty much free territory. There's still deer to the backside as well that you can play towards. And once again, because, the, because Wham is playing a static formation, he's unlikely to look in these areas. While well, that's happening, though, less static. These man at arms just running through. Oh, no. Well, the villagers are going to turn on them, but Wham, this isn't quite as effective against the HRE in Castle Age or Imperial Age, in fact, as it was in Feudal and Dark. I think these villagers need protection, sir. Sir? 
So you are you're a terrible father. You're a terrible father to your people. Why are you letting them die like this? No. Oh wow. Not being able to escalate that eco lead further. Still only 15 billies ahead. And now the farm transition coming in from the Muslim on the backside. Rush through. At the pass of Swabia, but this this is where you have to burn it down now, or the Muslim is going to just outboom you. Remember, this Love Hotel is as effective as free TCs with a 66% discount. Fight underway, man at arms. Of course, we are to hold you at bay. Spearman and MAA from the English won't do it alone. And I don't know about this one, Wham. I mean, you need to, to extract eco value here, my friend. Like, you don't have the ability to tech up anytime soon. And if you try to fall back now for an Imperial Age, you know what's going to happen. The Muslim will just escalate. He'll just build up a military force. He'll get his Golden Hat upgrades, and then he'll run out. In fact, those Golden Hat upgrades are already coming to the picture. Elite Man at Arms. Also, remember, he went for the Mine Work Palace, meaning all these tech ups are heavily reduced on the cost. In fact, look at it there. 30% reduction. So now only costing 350 resources as opposed to the normal 500. March out. Willing to fight now. A fight that Wang does not want to take. A few Langstick in the mixer is a little bit too problematic for him. Langstick, of course, not getting the opportunity to fully gap close here. The Lombos are trying to target them out. Nice micro coming out from Wang as a result of that. As he gets with the Langstick, now he can take the fight. Still has the number of Vyge. Wow, what is he doing this time, though? He's pushing more troops. He's actually just pushing more troops. He's not scaling himself at all. I think I can see where Wham's coming from, though. Like, if he keeps up this pressure and the Muslim can't build an army in the next three or four minutes, his eco should reach a point where it can naturally scale towards Imperial. You have to remember, though, that you are up against the Palace of Swabia. So your opponent is going to scale just as well in that timing. Instead, you come online at a much later timing, say around the 45, 50 minute mark as the English when you've got enclosures and your opponent starts to drop his resources. Because one big downside of playing as the HRE is you are gathering 40% quicker, yes. But that means you're getting rid of resources 40% quicker, right? You're not fabricating additionals. You're not using infinite resources in a late game scenario boom. Instead, you're very quickly depleting the map, and, and that means you're playing out of your safe zone much quicker than Wham will be. Wham for the moment. On his way to the danger zone. As he plays into his opponent's base, trebuchets on the front line now. Wham. Oh, he's escalating. Outpost defenses with the relics inside. It's going to make him a lot more chunky, a lot harder to fight through. A relic pull out here as the Muslim is just trying to line his defenses now, moving the relics out of the monasteries and into those outposts. But the outposts are not lasting long here. One's going to go down. Langsneck just trying to wrap around the side. Or maybe just a miss micro. Either way, it doesn't work out. The trebuchets, I'm expecting a second one, and there it is. Now Wham's able to breach the base fast. The Muslim needs to switch it up, needs to utilize these stables and get a flank force in to get rid of the trebuchets before they get rid of him. Another one that's going to go down, and after all that, now that's just 200 gold missing per minute from Yuriko, and a Ford Keep option for Wham, which he's looking to exploit. Villager pool will be good. 16 billies on the front line. Wham, he smells blood in the water. Pounces like a shark. The man at arms is going to shift the wood line away. Now on the northeastern side of the base, as the Muslim is being denied fully on his western flank. An attempt to pick up the relics and move them away is going to be a big fat fail here. A dangerous situation now for the Muslim. Needs to get troops together fast. Moves through the gaps between his racks. Floods straight in. And it looks like Wham is just diving in, trying to gather info here, not willing to fight. For good reason now, because these units will trade poorly up against Langsteck and Elite Man Arms. As they trade poorly, your trebs trade well. Targeting it onto the Mine Work Palace. Soon to fall. It looks like Siege Workshop's coming out. The Muslim understanding that actually it's mainly the range that's the problem. And of course, range do not handle Maganels very well anymore. With their 50% bonus damage. Good timing on the emergency repairs just in time there from the Muslim to maximize its value. But with three trebuchets in the front line, the dream of keeping it alive should be short-lived here. And, oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Wow, I noticed it. So Wham could just send in a small group of man at arms and kill off most of this eco now. Eco that you're wholly reliant on. Like we said, the Muslim, you run out of resources fast this way when you play the Civ like this. 
It's exactly why Wham keeps pressuring, right? Like, Wham has sacrificed full scalability. He's still playing Castle versus Imperial, but the reason it works is because his opponent doesn't have this resource boom available to him. He's always being chipped away at. He's not building up his military. He's not accessing more dangerous resources to give himself a surplus in reserve. And now the crossbows diving in deep. Maganel targeted out before it gets a second shot. And you're in trouble. Cannon upgrades are at least going to be a little bit frustrating for Wham to contest with. But Wounds of Trade Away is forced to once again stick you down to a military force count of zero because he knows he's got a secondary line incoming and the trebuchet count continues to escalate. On the upside right now for the Muslim is no troops in range of the keep means no attacks to be buffed with these trebuchets. That will not stop them from making short work of all your infrastructure. Mine work pass on fire. Soon to fall. Final shot should be coming in and might be good enough. Not this round, but the next round will finish him off. And this is kind of frustrating for Wham. He really wants an outpost here to get the attack speed buffer on these trebs. It's a big buffer for them at this stage, especially with Network of Sitdals being researched. Bombard's now coming out. The Muslim has had enough of this crap. Trebs do need to be a little bit careful. Respect the damage that the cannon can do. You gotta respect the damage that Wham can do. Now wrapping around freely into the eco of the Muslim and he doesn't have troops in position. He doesn't have defenses in place. It looks like Wham actually double thinks this. He turns around and goes onto the pocket eco. Not even go for the bigger value target. But he's going for the gold right outside of the Muslim's base. I wondered where those villagers went. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a lot of idle time running out here. It's got to be worthwhile. Just going to yoink the gold deposit from right underneath the Muslim's nose. And the Muslim, he needs to pull a villager right now. There it is. Group coming out. Trebuchet is very dangerous in this situation. When you start to get out to five of them, they get the ability to just instant snipe down these bombards if you're not careful. Something you need to be careful of because the Trebs, of course, do have 16 tar range compared to the Bombards at 10. So very difficult to gap close upon them. Bombards now targeting onto the keep. Keep on for the moment. The Trebuchets. Ooh, missing their shots here. Colrin is now coming out. And it looks like Wham is going to be forced to commit here with the crossbows. Uh -huh, let's see if he hits it this time. I thought that Wham came from the sci-fi world of StarCraft, but I'm starting to feel like he may have came from the sci-fi world of Star Wars because this is some Stormtrooper aim if I've ever seen it. <laughs> miss. I wish you would just like bubble text miss every time you missed as well. Really just to rub it in. This is just ridiculous. The bombards, just two of them are good enough. The keep is slowly going down. Even the attacks be buffed, but the trebs just can't get through it quick enough. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, it's going to be a loss there for Wab. Hasn't got the resources for another keep yet either. And he's struggling to hold the Muslim in. The Muslim begin to push out here. Culverin's moving in range. The Trebuchet's trying to target them out. The Culverin looking unanswered. The 12 missile resistance ensuring the crossbows cannot deal with it. And the crossbows now being chased away by the elite man at arms. Ah, it's going to be a lot of siege loss. Wow. Heavy loss here, and look at the resource right now. He needed another two minutes for this. Two more minutes, and it could have been an affordable loss. But the timing on this is going to unleash the Muslim too fast, and it means that once again, Wham is going to be locked into Castle Age as he has to reinvest into his military force. His crossbows starting to trade worse and worse. The Bombard count up to three. The Culverin's still alive. Bag and Nails now in the field as well. And the Muslim, he's escalating towards that pop cap situation with a tech up advantage that is being fully realized now. Most research has done the blacksmiths. Elite status gained on all the units he is utilizing right now. Langsnack still need it though now that he's switching into them. And the threat no longer contained. Wham needs to reset and come up with a new strategy because if he continues doing what he's done here so far, it's just going to lead to a, a loss in a few more minutes. Wow. I mean, I'm not seeing the, the pivot. I'm not seeing the transition here. He's not holding food. Village account is harder onto the food line. He never got fertilization either, which is, is quite perplexing. I feel like this is the stage in the game where it's worthwhile. You have 61 people working on farms. Surely it's worth it now. The Muslim, still healthy on the income. Just keeping that push out of man at arms going. Lag stick as well, of course, is a heavy demand in the food department. About to get heavier with a commitment to archer ranges, looking to get the range composite himself. And 
Yeah, don't be deceived by the numbers. The Muslim isn't starved out. Remember, he set up the farms at the back, so he's not running out of food anytime soon. No, Treps, oh, no, another one going down. This forest, this forest of deceit that is working very well now for the Muslim. As Wham is too paranoid to move out. Too many crossbowmen that will be exposed to potential Maganel far. And he's right to be paranoid. One Maganel with two rounds could take out your crossbows. So you need to give it some respect. More bombards being pushed. More troops ready to move in on the front line. Wham trying to build additional infrastructure to get the troops out required to defend this. And Ooh, the villagers got found. That's a heavy hit. Wham, he never pulled them back. Despite the fact he lost the keep. The gluttonous boy refused to leave. And now the Muslim has the eco lead for the first time in so long in this game. My first time pretty much all this game. Bombards in trouble. Nice commitment coming out from Wham. Mistakes being made here by the Muslim. That's going to be a whole siege army going down. And that means the trade is not going to be going his way. Wham with a more sizable force here. Langsnick trying to make it go his way though. There's just not enough of them left. They get targeted out by the ranged units. And now all the range that you have is going to be gone, Ben. Back to the drawing board. Really weird mistake made here. I, I do feel like the Muslim should have had another Magan out, out sooner. Two or three Maganels here could have dealt with a lot of the mana arms on the intro. And then you could have actually dispatched a lot of the range units before they cleaned up your Lang's neck. But now, this is just a very one-sided trade. Like, militarily, you know, if you talk about pop count, count, probably similar losses. When you talk about resource count, it's like three times more favorable for WAM. But getting better as well as his Lang's neck. Commit on to the Siege Workshop. He managed to target out a few of them on the retreat. Now Siege Workshop does need a repair here. You do want to keep this alive. You want to get more trebs because although you have found your way back towards the Muslim's base, he's now stabilized himself with a keep here. And you no longer have that treb army that was proving so frustrating for the Muslim anymore. And that's why losing the Siege Army, although costly, doesn't lead to a loss in this game. If there were still three trebs left, you're in trouble. You're going to lose a lot of your infrastructure. But the fact that you were able to wipe the Maganels before losing your own siege means that now Wham is sitting outside your base with no way of actually pushing in. In fact, he needs new siege workshops as well. He's going to build four siege workshops. This is a heavy burden. Wham. I can't believe he's still playing castle. Doesn't really have much of a choice anymore, though. You have to keep in mind, the Muslim, he's escalated to a point where he's always a threat. So if you ever go for Imperial now, Without decimating half of his base, you're going to be the one who's going to get rinsed. What's, what's starting to happen here? Small vanguards moving in. Lang's next seriously just frustrating if they find their way onto these eco lines. Eco lines that are still weak because Wham never got the textiles. Wham now looking to get that Imperial Age. It's basically pop cap, so if there's any time, it's now. And it is underway and a heavy investment. 35 people, 37, working on the Wingard Palace. I'm not sure if it's going to be the winning detail for him in this game. Flash in the center of the sacred site. Maganel targeting onto the range formation. Heavy damage done, but the torches come out. Another round of shots will not come out. The Maganels do go down. Lagsdeck will clean up the front line, though. Now allow the Muslim to disengage, but instead he goes in even deeper. Now with the gunpowder infantry as well as the Lagsdeck, they're going to clean house here. Heavy losses for Wham as he has to target onto the Langsdeck, onto the Mad Arms, and it means the Hand Cannoneers, the premium unit, are just getting in the good trades. Wham, worst case situation, because now the Muslim, he has the eco lead closer to pop cap than you. Military force also neck and neck at this stage, but a one up now for the Muslim, as he's able to afford the Hand Cannoneers in a situation where you can't, as Wham is completely gold depleted now. He needs to get his hands on the enclosures to get himself back in this game, but to do so, he does need to find gold source first. Chasing. Wow, really getting no breathing room here. This is becoming perplexing. Can't even start building the wing guard armies as that does require gold. I mean, it's all on this. Like, if he doesn't get access to the new gold line, if he gets denied there, the game is definitely GG. It's a good thing he snuck out unnoticed. Otherwise, you know Dumuzum will be contesting. He has the ability to do so. Instead, Dumuzum decides to dive towards the base. A keep aggressively being placed next to the wing guard pass. A diving coming in from a few man at arms and ground being gained quickly here. Ground that he's going to look to exploit as Wham. Now only two military units, and it's all because of the gold. He's trying to fix it now with hand cannoneers as well. Wham, I don't know about this one, bud. 
I don't think you're going to be able to build enough hand cannon here. Remember, they have a longer production speed than, than any other unit here. 35 seconds compared to the 22 or the 15 seconds of the crossbows and longbows, respectively. And it feels too late. Like, you need a marketplace. You need to get the initial golden. You need to get your wing guard pass, maybe some mana arms, some sort of transition. Not even the enclosures are available. Nothing available to Wham. The gold starvation will bite him in the arse. Despite the early aggression, no way for him to close out. It's going to be a win for the Muslim.